In the previous video, we wrote some edge case tests that cover what happens if we send in an empty title string or try to say that our hot new album has like minus five tracks or something crazy. So whilst we are catching these gnarly situations, we aren't really helping our Symphony 4 JSON API consumers as we just say, you know, the status is error and good luck with that. It'd be much nicer if we said that, yes, there is an error and it's because, you know, X, Y, and Z. Now Symphony's form has already done about 90% of the hard work for us. It knows what the errors are and to which fields they apply. But getting that information from Symphony's form component and converting it into a nice bit of JSON is, well, it's not easy. So both FuzzRest Bundle and the API platform take care of this process for us. But as we aren't using either of those at this point, we're going to have to handle this problem ourselves. Now, I'm not in the habit of reinventing the wheel, and I guess that's a big part about why I like Symphony and the vast array of libraries or bundles within the ecosystem. And it's also why I like WordPress, actually. For the most part, people much smarter than I am have already encountered and solved many of the problems that I encounter. And this is thankfully also the case here. Now, the FuzzRest Bundle crew have already solved this problem, as have the API platform team, and each solution is valid and each is different. For our needs, the FuzzRest Bundle approach is the quickest way to achieve our goals. We'll still need a bit of customization, but here's our starting point. Now to get this into our project, we could either require the entire FuzzRest Bundle, or we could copy and paste this file over to our project and update the namespace. Now that's the very sort of naive high level view. If we do that, then we aren't going to get any of the advantages of using a third party bundle. We're only going to get a point in time copy of this code. We may even not bring over the tests. And generally, this should be setting off some alarm bells, but, and this is a sort of a big but really, I actually wouldn't recommend building a raw JSON API like what we're doing anyway. I would strongly recommend you either use FuzzRest Bundle or the API platform and leverage what's already been done. We're building a raw JSON API because we want to understand how things work at a very fundamental level. That way, when we do switch over to using these third party libraries, we have a better understanding of what they're bringing to the table for us. So with that in mind, bear with me, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my own implementation, which is a slight variation on this. So I'm going to create a new file in my project inside the serializer directory, which I'm going to call the form error serializer. I'm just going to paste in the implementation that I have from my clipboard. And this is also in the show notes. Essentially, this convert form to array function, which was private in their implementation and exposed via the normalize function, which in itself is more advanced than what we're doing here. I've chosen to make that explicitly public and we're gonna to have to call it ourselves. Now, of course, feel free to write your own implementation. One interesting thing, if we actually look at the documentation here, is it says this code has been taken from JMS Serializer anyway. So, you know, why reinvent the wheel? Now, thanks to Symphony 4's auto wiring, our form error serializer is now fully operational. We aren't doing anything particularly special with this implementation. So in order to use it, we just need to inject it. And I'm going to use this in more than just my post action. So I'm going to inject it via the constructor. I'm injecting the specific implementation. I'm just going to initialize those fields there. And now we can start using the error serializer. So I'm going to add a new key to our response, which I'm going to call errors. And from the form error serializer, I'm going to call that convert form to array. And all I need to pass in is the form now let's test this using Postman. So send in our request, which we know is invalid. And now we see the status of error, but we also see some errors where we have the title that this value should not be blank. So this is a much nicer experience for any of our JSON API consumers. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tag this test again with T. I only really want one test to run at this point. I'm going to rerun the tests with the tags of T. And potentially somewhat unexpectedly, our tests still pass even though our implementation has changed. This is a quite interesting feature of BHAT. So our test specifically checks that we get back a 400 error code and the response body contains the JSON of status error. We can see that for ourselves if we look at the output from our postman request, we still have that key and value of status error. It's just now we have some additional data, this errors key and the subsequent object under that key. So from BHAT's point of view, the behavior is still the same. You know, that we've still got the expected behavior. We've just got some additional stuff. So what I'm going to do anyway is I'm just going to take a copy of our full response now and I'm going to update each of the tests accordingly. So under here, let's change this. It should be fine. I'm going to send that test back through just to double check. And that looks good. Likewise, if we go back to our tests and take a copy of the next body, 
make sure to tag this one now with a tag of T and I suppose I could leave that one in but what I want to do now is just test this one let's paste that in so this time we've got a track count of zero this value should be greater than zero yep that looks good and we'll just update both of these tests now as they should both have the same expected response body okay so rather than run with the tags of T I'll just take that off run all the tests and we should still have three passes so just going back to that album symphony 4 edge case feature now not only is our api more fully tested but the interesting behavior is captured and it kind of becomes your living documentation it's a big reason why i love bhat this is a brilliant file that you can share with your front-end developers. It answers a whole bunch of the questions without them having to bother you. Plus, as it's Gherkin, it's so human readable that I found it just resolves most questions before they even get to me. So that's a massive win. Now this was the hardest part of rolling our own Symphony 4 JSON API. I appreciate we didn't dive too deeply into how those form errors are serialized. And my personal point of view on this is if the problem is already solved, and it works well, then don't spend any more time on it than you need to. Now, I know that will be contentious, but that's my personal opinion. Of course, yours may differ, and that's absolutely fine. Anyway, now that the hard part's out of the way, we can get on with tackling the get, the put, the patch, and the delete.